Shrimp people, what's up? Today we're doing a video on baby shrimp survival and how to increase the odds and the, the success of your breeding project with your shrimp. Now, a lot of people think, oh, you know, just put your shrimp in there and do their thing and babies will be fine. Put some moss in there, good, blah. No, it doesn't work like that. I mean, unless you're breeding like some savage cherry shrimp that literally can like survive a zombie apocalypse and then some, it does require some attention and some care, especially if you want to maximize your results. So I know it seems like a pretty straightforward, you know, um, common sense type of thing, but I'm going to tell you some of the things that I do that works for me and that I know a lot of other hobbyists do. So the number one thing that is important is that you have good water quality. Shrimp like stability in their parameters. Whether you're dealing with Neocaridina shrimp or Caridina, they like stability. So you never want to do too large of a water change. Even if there's a problem in your tank, even if your parameters are, are you, let's just say you test your water one day and you don't like how high your nitrates are. You don't want to do a, a massive water change. That is actually going to do more harm than good, especially if the shrimp are not dropping dead like flies. You do notice a problem, so you want to you want to be proactive, you want to take care of it, but you want to do it in small increments so as not to shock the shrimp or cause any further problems. Initial reaction, right, is to fix the problem 110% get rid of those nitrates, let's bring them down to zero and it's all good. Well, yeah, but you need to do that over maybe the period of a longer period of time rather than doing it all in one day, dropping your tank level down 50% or whatever and shocking all the shrimp and having way more die off than you would uh, than if you just did it the way I'm telling you to do it. And this is where baby shrimp are way more fussy than adult shrimp. The baby shrimp will die off far quicker than even adult shrimp. So they're way, they are more sensitive than the adults in my experience. So, so don't do a, a water change that's too large. Make sure your parameters are stable. Make sure that they're in line. You're doing your regular water changes. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I just do top offs or, you know, I never do water changes. Well, I mean, that's great if it works for you, but I do suggest doing small water changes once a week. I mean, the waste accumulates at the bottom of the tank. You don't have to um, vacuum your gravel because it can stir up ammonia and create problems that way, but you wanna bring your vacuum very close to the substrate so that it, it will pick up stuff like this that I'm showing you right now. And without, you know, causing any issues. So water quality. Another thing that's very important in a shrimp tank, not only for babies, but for adults, but since we're focusing on baby shrimp, I'll tell you why it's important. Now, sponge filters. I only have one in this tank, but really you could have two. That would be awesome because it um, provides more of a surface for biofilm to grow. Your other option for sponge filters is a Hamburg Matten filter, and that's a very, very large square filter that goes on one side of your tank that covers one wall of the tank. And the reason a sponge filter is really important is because baby shrimp eat really, really tiny things and all shrimp eat biofilm, including babies. They will be picking on the, the sponge filters often, so it's very important to have that. Um, other than a sponge filter, another way you can create biofilm sources in your aquarium is using wooden leaves. So I do put um, challah wood in most of my tanks. Uh, here's a piece right here, jumbo challah. Here's a smaller piece right here. And then you want to put leaf litter in your tank. So that's a banana leaf. We got guava. We got mulberry. Now mulberry acts more as a direct food source because they eat it quickly. Whereas these um, leaves right here take a long time to disintegrate. And while they are in the tank, they're breaking down very slowly and creating that surface for biofilm. So 
I know a lot of people use Indian almond leaves, which is fabulous. And you can use guava, banana, um, Indian almond leaves, and I like to put more than one leaf in the tank. Um, you know, I don't know if you can see these babies on the wall here, but there are a lot of baby shrimp in this tank, and so you do. it is required that you put a little bit of effort and thought into how you're going to maximize you know the, the the potential for the most shrimp I mean nobody wants to see 10 shrimp in the tank forever <laughs> a lot of people get shrimp because they really enjoy watching the colony grow seeing the different sizes of shrimp in the tank and being active in the hobby trading shrimp selling shrimp things like that you know so um, leaf litter and chala wood are really great and especially because baby shrimp love to hide when they're first born so I mean there's a lot of holes and crevices and they'll hide under and between the leaves so aside from moss this is a great place for them um, to hide now another thing that is super duper important in your shrimp tank is moss and I guess a lot of people put moss in their tanks and no, don't really fully realize why they're doing it. It's not just because it looks cool and the shrimp stand on it. It's because baby shrimp, when they're born, they hide in it. And they're very tiny when they're born and they're looking for food that is super, super tiny. And because moss has such fine fronds or stems or leaves or whatever you want to call them, they hold the little pieces of food that fly into the water column and they hold them there so it's actually the perfect place for a baby shrimp to hide for its first first week of life where usually that's where you where you will find them um, you know moss is important for that reason for the baby shrimp hiding and eating off of them and um, aside from moss the last thing that I'm going to recommend um, aside from all these other tips is using a powdered baby food this is just a sample I bought from another hobbyist baby shrimp food so it's a powdered form of shrimp food so every day I put in a tiny tiny bit sometimes twice a day and a little bit goes a very long way um, you don't need to overfeed especially when you have a lot of backup things going on like the filter and the chala and the leaves. Putting in these tiny tiny granules of food. Um, the baby shrimp are gonna, I mean if you put a big chunk of food in here right, how the heck can a baby that's two millimeters long fit food into its mouth? It needs tiny food. I mean think about it. Could you fit a cherry into your mouth or a watermelon? If somebody gave you a watermelon and said swallow it now and eat it you cannot! I know it's silly, but think about it, right? A cherry, it's very easy. So, I mean, giving them appropriate sized food, they're going to eat it faster. They're going to have more access to it. They're going to grow faster. Giving them a gigantic food is just not going to work. So, that's why we're giving them powdered food. All right, I'm just going to lean this up here while I get some powdered food. So, usually powdered food comes with a tiny, tiny spoon. So, I'm going to put some on the spoon, and I'm going to show you right here, see that? We're going to put this in the tank, so I'm going to sprinkle it in there. Now for me, I usually don't um, spray it around or whatever because I have so many tanks, but you can just give it a little whirl and that will cause it to sink faster and the babies can access it. And see, this food is gonna land all over the tank. So yes, powdered foods are really important for baby shrimp because it disperses throughout the entire tank and it's really, really tiny pieces which are perfect for them to eat. All right guys, I hope this helps you guys. These are things that, you know, seem like common sense once they're told to you, but Sometimes you need to hear it and sometimes it helps a lot to hear certain things and I really hope that this video will help someone out there with their success and their shrimp tank and thank you so much for watching. Ah.